All right, so we're gonna start a new little series called Plant Propagation 101 so that I can answer individual questions and topics in individual videos so they're easier to find for you guys. Here's what I want you to do first. Like the video, subscribe, and if you have any questions or comments about this particular topic, just put them in the comments down below. Helps boost the channel and get it out to you guys a little bit faster. Now I've got a ton of ideas for videos we can do because you guys have given me those ideas over the years in questions. But today I read a question that was about Japanese maple seeds and I see this one a lot and I wanna make sure you guys understand exactly when the best time is to pick your Japanese maple seeds. But before we head out there, if you're serious Curious about wanting to propagate plants and you want to know all the ins and outs of what I do here and you want to build the frame that I build, I take you step by step through all of it, six hours of video on my website. Go click on the link in the description down below now and I think I have it up in the corner here as well and you guys can pay a nominal fee and get everything I do here and learn it all. All right, end commercial on with the Japanese maple. So I get a question all the time that says something like this. Hey Mike, it's springtime or it's early summer and my Japanese maple is loaded with Japanese maple seeds. Can I pick them now? Or sometimes people will say they're starting to fall on the ground. Can I pull them up off the ground and throw them in the fridge and start the whole process now? And the short answer is no. Japanese maple seeds, like any fruit or vegetable or you know, any other seed needs time to mature on the tree and fully ripen. For instance, you got an apple tree and you see little apples growing in the early spring. You see those little apples starting to form, but they're not ready to pick and eat yet. You got to wait all the way through until September or October or something like that before you pick the apples. The same is true for the Japanese maple seeds. They need all summer and part of the fall to fully ripen and be viable so that you can actually plant them and get them to germinate. Not all trees are like this. Some trees, you can pick the seeds earlier. In fact, I learned this from one of you guys, some maple seeds you can pick earlier in the summer, but not Japanese maple trees. They need that full time to ripen and become fully viable. So let's head out and look at my maple tree and I'll show you guys exactly what I've got going on out here. So real quick, before we head out there, I thought I'd show you this maple tree that we've got right behind me. I love this maple tree and look, it's got seeds on it. Lots of seeds, but they're not ripe yet. They're not ready. And so these are the same way as the Japanese maple seeds. These seeds right here are gonna have to wait to be picked until fall. All right, so we're out here in my landscape now and I've got two big Japanese maple trees, red leaf maple trees. Here's the first one right here. And this is just a generic red leaf maple. We actually bought this one at just a big box store. There's nothing special about it. It's not a specific special variety, but you can see it's got seeds all over it. This thing is absolutely loaded with seeds all throughout the branches. And this is what people are asking about. Look at that, all up in there. People want to know, can I pick these seeds now and start germinating them or start putting them in the fridge and get them ready for springtime or for uh, next springtime? And the answer is no. These little seeds are just not fully ripe yet. You can see right here, they're just, they're actually pretty soft. They don't have that hard coating shell around them right now. And they're not fully developed and formed, although they look really nice. They're the right size, almost. Some of them are a little small there, but they're just not fully ripened yet. And then if we look down here at the ground, let's see, we can find a few. Some of them have already fallen to the ground. And the only reason for this is, well, a couple of reasons. They're not viable for one. And two, the tree sometimes will shed some seeds and leaves because it's not getting enough water. This one's getting plenty of water. I'm guessing these seeds just weren't viable for whatever reason. I suppose also there could be a bug that might have cut these guys loose when it was up there in the tree, something like that. But there's different reasons. This is not ready though it's not quite ripe enough yet it needs to go through the entire season on the tree so you really couldn't do anything with this little group of seeds here they just are going to sit there and turn into mulch now that's the first tree if we move over here you can see way back over here i've got my blood good maple tree it's not quite as big now you can see the red on the leaves is pretty similar to the other one this one though is a blood good and the advantage of it is it holds on to its red 
throughout the fall further and so it's just a it's a beautiful specimen it keeps that red leaf further into the fall it looks really awesome and it is also loaded with seeds as you can see right there all of those seeds are just i mean you can all the way up through those branches you can see just hundreds and hundreds of seeds so it's going to be a good year for a japanese maple seed picking but they're not quite ripe yet now here's another shot from the other side you can see the seeds hanging down there really beautiful seeds and yeah they look like you just want to pick these things right now but like i said they're not viable and if we look down below we can see some seeds that fell off already. The tree just kind of shed them, just didn't need them anymore, didn't want them for whatever reason. You actually, there's quite a few of them down under this one, but they're just gonna turn into mulch. There's nothing you can do with them. Gonna have to wait. So I mentioned that there are some maples that can be harvested in the summer. And the one that I'm thinking of is the silver maple. And like I said, there was actually a viewer that introduced this concept to me. I didn't even know this previously, but I think there are a few others. But silver maple is the one that comes to the top of my head. It actually has seeds that should be harvested in the spring and summer. But it's an outlier. For the most part, it's going to be the fall when you harvest these seeds. And for Japanese maple, definitely the fall. All right, now, I thought to finish this off, we would do something that a lot of you are asking for on a regular basis, and it's difficult to put all of these little videos into single videos. So many people ask for updates on specific projects or plants that we've been working on over the last year, or maybe it was a year ago that I propagated them, and you want to know, how are they doing now? Well, I think at the end of these little series videos, we're going to add just an update on something that has to do with that video. So that being said, several years ago, and many of you know about this, I did a whole series on germinating these Japanese maple seeds. Over the years, I've done a couple other videos about it, but there was one specific series, and I think it's going all the way up to part nine or 10. I'll put links down in the description below, but a lot of you are asking, how are those maples doing now? Well, Let's just take a minute and show you how they're doing now. All right, so here they are in all their glory, big and beautiful and red. And as you can see, I still have them in one gallon pot. So this is not typical. This isn't what you would do to take care of these things normally. I just haven't figured out where I want to plant all these yet, what exactly I want to do with them. But they're there they're hanging out. I can't understand how they have grown so big and healthy and are doing so well for several years now in these one gallon pots, unless those roots are growing down into the soil, which I kind of have a feeling that might be happening, but uh, I'll get on top of it. During the winter, we'll have to pull these things out of here and I'm going to have to uh, cut those roots and get them potted up into bigger pots or just plant them out. I just don't have a place for them yet, but aren't they gorgeous now? I want to show you something else, another little update to this, because a lot of you have been asking about it. And here it is. This is that Japanese maple that I grafted, and I did a video on that one a few years ago. I'll put another link to that one down below, but uh, I'll show you the graft here in a second. This is blood good. From the rootstock up, this is all blood good maple. And it's this, it, the scion came off of my blood good that I just showed you, the last maple I showed you with the seeds on it. And if you can tell here, this is actually just a three gallon pot. It desperately needs to get out of that thing and put in the ground. The leaves are starting to curl back a little bit in a few areas because I can't keep it watered enough, but we've got the place picked out for it. We're gonna get it planted. There it is. Now let's take a look here so you can see, a lot of you've been asking about this. There is the graft. That's where I grafted it. Now this root stalk actually came from those other maples that you just saw inside. This is one of those seedlings. And I grafted a scion onto that seedling. So let me get my hand back behind here again. This was the actual seedling going up. I cut it off and then the graft grew up above that. So everything above this graft site is blood good maple. Everything below that graft site here is just generic Japanese maple seedling. Now, another question I get a lot is, Mike, why did you just cut a tree in half and graft another tree onto it? Why didn't you just leave the tree alone the way it was? Well, a lot of you I know understand this process, but a lot of you don't. And I know that because I get a lot of questions about it. So the reason I 
take a perfectly healthy tree and I cut it in half and then graft another tree on is because the blood good Japanese maple and many varieties don't grow as well on their own roots. But if you can germinate a generic Japanese maple seed, they grow real strong, healthy roots. And so I don't necessarily want that generic Japanese maple seed growing in my landscape. Maybe if you had a lot of property like I do, like I may plant those generic Japanese maples out further on my property. But if you're trying to create a nice garden with specific cultivars of Japanese maple, you want to graft onto a good healthy rootstock because the scion, the blood good or the whatever cultivar you want may not grow as well on its own roots, whereas the generic Japanese maple will. You graft the two together and now you've got the cultivar you want grafted on a good, strong, solid rootstock. And that's why we do that. So we're not really... You know, people say, why are you, why are you not creating two trees? Why are you taking one tree, cutting it off and creating one tree again? Why are you, you're not duplicating anything. We're not trying to duplicate anything. We're just trying to get a specific cultivar onto a strong rootstock. That's all that's about. So that's it. I think that concludes the whole Japanese maple seeds falling from the tree. Do we plant them now? Do we wait for them to ripen? You guys got the answer. I hope you learned something from it. So there you go, our first installment of Plant Propagation 101. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. No, we're not rooting any cuttings today, but seeds are just as involved in plant propagation as any rooted cutting. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, like I said before, hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to follow along and see more of these videos. Have a fantastic week, guys, and happy 4th of July. And I'll see you in the next video. Adios.